I'm Lynn Stoddard, um, Executive Director of Sustainable CT. Welcome to our second coffee hour of the year. Um, we're holding these coffee hours once a month on third Fridays at 10 a.m. Um, and our goal is to just create a space to informally share about sustainability work, successes, questions, challenges, things that are happening in your towns, um, a space to support each other and build community across town boundaries, inspire collaboration, and a top opportunity for you all to get to know our team and our support tools a little bit better. Um, so each coffee hour we have an, an overall theme, but then we have a lot of time for sharing on the theme topic or any topic. So um, it, these coffee hours are for you and we wanna make sure they're valuable. Um, so let us know if there are topics you'd like to hear about or things you'd like to share from your town um, that we can um, feature you to share with others. Uh, today's topic is equity and that's a result of last month when I said, what do you wanna hear about? And people said equity. So i um, happy to respond to that. So I'm gonna just start with um, introducing um, those from Sustainable C team uh, who are here, um, in case you don't know us or haven't placed a face with the emails. So why don't we start with Torin? Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, T. Hey, everybody. Uh, glad to see everybody on today's coffee hour. My name is Torin Radicioni. I am Sustainable CT's webmaster. So if you have a problem with the website or seen any on the anything on the website that looks looks funky, it's my fault. I'm sorry. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody, making new connections. That's what Sustainable CT is all about. Uh, but enough from me. I'm going to kick it to my partner, Jess. Morning, everyone. Good to see you all. My name is Jess LeClaire, and I'm a program manager with Sustainable CT. And if you ever have questions about anything at all, feel free to give me a shout, and I will put my contact information in the chat box just in case. And as you'll hear from Ahmed, we have equity coaches on our team. If you want to work with one of those coaches, you just shoot me an email as well. But good to see you all. Yeah, so um, actually, why don't we just introduce our speakers and then I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of our equity support tools before we get rolling. But um, let's have Cheryl just introduce yourself briefly. I am Cheryl Poirier and I'm with the Sustainable Old Lyme team. Excellent. Thanks. Cheryl's going to share in a little while about um, how they've used the equity support tools and some of their equity toolkits. And Ahmed. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Ahmed Abujarade. They, them pronouns. I am an equity coach. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces. Hi, Patrice. Great. Thanks, Ahmed. We'll have uh, hear more from uh, them in just a few minutes. So um, one of the things I wanted to share quickly is new stuff happening. Um, and Torin is going to quickly show you a new feature on our website um, to help you uh, navigate the program a little better. Um, are you ready to do that, Torin? I am. I have my screen popped up. So we've wanted to create a sense of autonomy for some of our users of Sustainable CT. So we've developed a few training videos. Um, that are very accessible on our website. So if you go to our homepage, which is www.sustainablect.org, you click on support for your town and you will be brought to this lovely page that will, once my computer loads it, provide you with tons of resources that are really helpful for certification. Um, we've created a page anchor that links to some training videos that we've created. Um, and we'll be adding more as we continue the coffee hours going forward. Uh, the first two that we have are very brief. They're on our revised, renumber, and reorganized categories for 2021, as well as how to use the municipal dashboard and add municipal users to your sustainability team's municipal dashboard. Um, so more to come. And if anybody has any suggestions on future topics, please feel free to reach out. More than happy to kind of tailor it to our users, the people who actually use our website. So enough from me. I'm going to stop talking and I'll put the link in the website for all of you so you can have access to it and I will kick it to our wonderful co-hosts. Excellent. So um, I'm going to start us off 
with an overview of our equity support tools at Sustainable CT. And you should be able to see the website again. Um, we're gonna do some of this screen sharing stuff because we've heard uh, that the website is a little overwhelming and has too much stuff on it. So just to kind of help you navigate. So this is the landing page, sustainablect.org. The place you guys usually wanna go is support for your town. So this is where all the good stuff is. Um, for sustainability teams, you'll see this menu on the left to help you find different materials, including um, some of the, uh, yeah, the fellows, sustainable sustainability team guidance and so on. But today we're focusing on equity. So all of our equity stuff, we try to summarize and house on this equity page under support for your town. And in brief, we have, um, as you know, uh, equity is equity action 1.1 optimized for equity is the only required action for certification The you towns will choose um, at least one action from our 12 categories, but you must do uh, 1.1 optimized for equity and we'll be talking about that and the use of the toolkit and give you some examples. Um, from Old Lyme and, and you can share them um, from what you guys are doing in your towns and any questions you have. This year in 2021, we added two additional equity actions, 1.2 and 1.3. They are not required. They're just opportunities for um, a point and doing additional work in, in the equity area. So one of those action 1.2 is participate in equity training. And I'll talk in a minute about uh, what we're providing for that. And action 1.3 is develop and adopt a statement on equity. So I know a lot of towns have already begun to do that. There are some um, lots of um, uh, equity statements towns have adopted relating um, uh, health equity um, and uh, to, to uh, racial disparities. Um, so that's a new one. Our coaches are avail available to help you with that. And again, it's not required, but it's um, an opportunity to go further in this work and articulate um, kind of your values as a town publicly through a, a statement that's adopted through your governing body. Um, so the support tools, the toolkit goes back to um, the support for optimized for equity and one, one, action 1.1. Um, you can see uh, some resources here. Equity coaching, Ahmad is one of uh, eight coaches we have on contract um, available to you. We, uh, these are all free resources. Um, we match a coach with a town uh, based, you know, when, when you're interested. Um, and we're, we strongly suggest that as a starting point um, for certification and any sustainability work. Um, we uh, uh, offer at least four hours of this coach's time to support your town. And usually um, that's just very kind of loose uh, um, number of hours. We usually can exceed that if needed. Um, and finally, the equity trainings. So as I said, there's a new action where you can get points on equity trainings. We've provided these in-depth trainings in the past with our partner, um, Thought Partner Solutions, who facilitates the, um, the trainings. Uh, and we've, this year, we are really happy we've doubled um, the training. So we had two sessions last year, two workshops. Now we're doing one each quarter. So the first one starts next week and it has these three dates um, in February and March and so on. We've got a spring, summer and fall. So each of these are identical. You can sign up for, each, you know, the same thing. You get, if you sign up in one quarter, it's the same thing any other quarter. And um, each session, each workshop has three different sessions. It's actually a total of um, 12 hours. So this is really in-depth work. Those of you who have done it can, can share later on if you care to, um, your experience with the training. Uh, we found it to be um, really useful and powerful. One of the things we've um, changed about the training this year is the final hour of each of the three sessions, our equity coaches will be joining us so that we can create kind of a better connection 
between the coaching work and the in-depth training. And the coaches have all gotten trained on the framework of this training. So um, they're familiar with the tools that are discussed during the training. So we're working towards just a much um, better integration of that support. And so in this final hour of each of the equity training sessions, our coaches will come in and essentially help with the question we often heard last year. Like this training is amazing. I learned so much, but it's just me going back to my town and I don't know, I don't know where to go from here. So it's really that connection of kind of bringing it back home that the coaches will be there um, to, to have a, you know, an interactive session at the end of each of the um, workshops. And as far as getting points for participating in those trainings, um, another thing we heard was, I'm going back, I did this intensive training, it was really powerful, I learned a lot, but it's just me. And so we're looking to uh, have town send a cohort, at least one elected official, one staff person, and one resident who's on your sustainability team um, to attend the training together. It doesn't have to be uh, the same quarter, um, but so you have a common experience and it's a little easier to go back and have those conversations um, in your community and follow through on what you've learned. So that is my brief overview of what we've got for support tools. We'll dig into the details on some of these. And I will say that we're adding, our coaches are um, amazing as, as you know and you'll learn. And they, as they're working with towns, identify other areas for training that are needed. So um, Ahmad and um, Elizabeth and some other coaches actually created some kind of one hour, one and a half hour training webinars uh, last year. We'll be adding some of those this year as well. So in addition to the very in-depth training, we'll have focused training on other topic areas. And some of the ones that have emerged um, that uh, our coaches are working on are around kind of um, surveys and data collection related to equity. So as you know, when you begin to work on Action 1.1, you're asked to look, uh, look inside to see um, who lives in your communities and begin to connect with them. Many towns um, think about using a survey to reach out and we've, really, we've, we've read and, and heard from many of you about that journey of the survey and realizing that it's kind of not enough to do something that's just online. How do you meet the needs of all people? How do you make it accessible? So we're gonna drill into those questions um, in some of these trainings that are being developed. There, uh, we'll be posting those soon and they'll be included in our newsletter as soon as um, they're available. So that's it for me. And um, I'm going to turn it over now to Cheryl from Old Lyme. We're really grateful that you're here to share some of your lessons. And as you all know, this is really informal and it's not, it's not uh, like, oh, here's all the amazingly fantastic teams that, uh, things that this town or this team did. We want you to talk about the challenges. We want you to be open about um, how we can provide better support and where some of the barriers are. So this is just an open forum to share honestly, and we're really grateful to Cheryl for joining us today. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Cheryl. I have to unmute first, <laughs> step one. Okay. okay, thank you, Lynn. And thank you all for having me um, to share with you Old Lyme's experience. And a few weeks back, I watched the coffee hour with New Milford and I was delighted to see that New Milford had a successful process, but they also had a very nonlinear process they had to circle back a few times and it made me feel so much better about our own process in Old Lyme because it has been anything but linear. Um, so, and I'm going to talk today about the equity toolkit and uh, approaching some of our actions. And um, what the toolkit does is give you a framework. Um, and the more often you apply it, it's really, it, it's easier to think in this way. Um, 
as you go forward. So if you have heard in the past, Sustainable Connecticut is by towns for towns. And I'm sure that was quite a, an inclusive and equitable process in developing Sustainable Connecticut. And so what I'm gonna share with you today is an old line. We had three actions um, that I'll talk about today. A walk audit that was for seniors by seniors, an economic plan that was for townspeople by townspeople. And what we're developing now with another town, the town of Lyme, is arts programming for youth by, by youth. Um, I want to make one other point for anyone here who's new to the process. I think some of you have been at this for a little bit of time, but if you're new on this and you're sitting in on this coffee hour, if you've been involved in your municipality sustainability efforts, you are most likely a doer. I can pretty much guarantee you're a person who figures out how to make things happen and how to get things done. The certification process draws these kinds of people. And if you're someone who's used to making things happen, then being truly inclusive and allowing a co-creating process might feel challenging to you. It might be uncomfortable and feel slow to you. So um, for instance, the youth arts programming action I'm gonna share with you is about to launch and I'm talking to town programming leaders who are these kinds of take charge, great idea people. And I'm warning them that in order to be inclusive and equitable, we're going to have to sit on our hands and allow the ideas for this program to percolate from percolate up from the youth that we're including in this process. And we're joking about biting on towels and not leading the conversation. But I can tell you for sure that the process and the end product is going to be so much more richer and appropriate and robust because we're giving a voice to the people we are trying to serve. Oops. So which can, comes first, the chicken or the egg? Which comes first, identifying the people in your municipality who may not be heard and having that inform what actions you take on or identifying the sustainable Connecticut action and then including these people in the planning process. So Lynn assures me it can be either way. The three actions I'm gonna share with you all started with an action we wanted to accomplish and then identifying the audiences we wanted to serve and create an inclusive process to include them in making the action uniquely relevant to the community. Um, so you'll see with, and some of these are gonna be um, old numbers and new numbers because we did them under the old numbering system, but action, what's now action 6.5, conduct a walk audit. Um, that audit could have been done with a general population in mind, but we looked at our old line population and learned that we have an age demographic that skews older than most other towns in Connecticut. And this older population is increasingly moving out of town because they're moving out of the larger homes they've raised their families in and moving to towns with village type amenities and walkability. So it made sense to focus our action, conduct a walk audit to include and serve the 65 and older population in old line. So we could have just as easily said, we have an older population looking to move to other towns with better amenities and walkability. What actions can we take to look at this? But this is the way it evolved for us. We started with the action. So let's look at that particular action we took on in 2020 toward our bronze award, conducting a walk audit. And I'm using the term we, but actually I joined the team after this action was well underway in terms of implementation by some community, wonderful community members. Um, so Old Lyme is not quite rural, but it's not quite suburban. We're a small town on the shoreline. People in the center of the state tend to know us primarily because of our beaches. The town is mostly uh, made up of single family homes. It's working on its affordable housing. The population is shrinking as employers such as Pfizer downsizes its Groton operations. So we have about 7,000 year round, um, a population of about 7,000 people year round, and that sort of doubles in the summer. Very few streets have sidewalks, but more and more people have taken up walking for exercise as well as bicycling. Um, that looks like a very busy sidewalk. That's our uh, annual event, a Midsummer Arts Festival. So that's a very crowded sidewalk for us, but 
I wanted to show a sidewalk on Lime Street. So as I stated, we looked at our demographics and saw this older population. And we began reaching out to various organizations to start this walk audit and talk to the older uh, residents who might help us design the walk audit, where we uh, conducted it and what we were going to do. Um, so we started reaching out to various organizations such as faith communities, the senior center, the library um, to make connections with people. And this was in March, 2020. Well, March, 2020 turned out to be a very busy time as the month went on and into April. And uh, it was a busy time for a number of organizations as they figured out how to continue things like church services, programming and outreach at the beginning of the pandemic. They were also scrambling to ensure seniors had things like food security and social connection. We also saw more and more people walking for exercise to get out of their homes safe, safely, especially in our center village on the main street that has sidewalks and that's Lime Street. So despite all of the obstacles thrown in the team's way as stay as stay at home orders began and people were trying to figure out what a Zoom was back then, um, the team was able to hear from enough older residents who said they wished to remain vibrant and engaged and the pandemic heightened their concern for this. Walking is a free, healthy lifestyle choice and one where you can socialize with neighbors or walking buddies, albeit socially distanced now. So our core question, the walking audit was gonna help us answer became how can we ensure the healthy pleasures of walking and the community connections made while doing so are available to all regardless of age or physical ability. Um, the AARP has a suggested walk audit form and format to follow. So the team utilized this through several organizations, including the senior center, one of the churches and the conservation commission, older residents were encouraged to participate in the walk audit. And we also advertised participating in the um, audit on Facebook and then through an online news, um, newspaper called Limeline. That audit, which is now known as phase one, covered four different routes in town with various levels of safety. And because of COVID, the participants, um, the number of participants was very low and quite low for our older population, which we were trying to reach. So that audit was deemed insufficient. So we decided on a redo um, and we focused on one route in this now phase two audit. And that was Lime Street, the street I mentioned earlier. It's a lovely street. It has our town hall and town library on it. Lots of small businesses and art galleries. Um, the Memorial Day Parade is there. So it's a street that is quite social and um, it's a, it's a place where if you want to walk safely on a sidewalk in Old Lime, you might choose to drive to Lime Street and take your walk there. It's best enjoyed by foot and um, particularly during the pandemic when people wanted to walk safely. So a lot was learned in the phase one audit. We were revising as we went, the phase one audit helped the team reformat the AARP form. Cardstock was used for the audit form. Um, instead of paper and the font size was enlarged for the older eyes doing the audit. Um, we also had to adapt because we were asking older individuals to leave the safety of their homes and come to a street where they might cross paths, so to speak, with others not wearing masks. So we ended up asking people to prepare ahead of time for the audit and then go on the audit with members of their household bubble. And this is not how the AARP walk audit is designed, but we needed to be flexible during COVID. Um, because we still weren't getting a lot of older people who we were trying to serve, we decided to supplement the audit with a survey monkey. Now this was not part of the audit, but it supplemented the audit as part of creating an inclusive process during the pandemic. So we asked residents to tell us where they walk, why they choose to walk where they do, um, and how their physical abilities played into their choices. 
So this is why an inclusive process is so key. If we had a number of what I would call able-bodied um, young people doing the Lime Street office uh, audit, um, the number of benches would have been noted along Lime Street. There are four right here in front of an ice cream shop. I think there's another three along the one and a half miles. Um, but we would not have understood how those benches were perceived as insufficient. A number of older walkers said they needed to take a break while walking and the benches along Lime Street weren't inviting to them. They sat in front of cafes or older home or uh, private homes. So if the benches instead were in front of a public place like town hall, they'd be more willing to sit there. So if the bench is in front of a cafe, they feel like those are for customers. Um, on a, another thing we learned because of our survey is that um, on the survey, we include a lot of physical um, barriers that might preclude someone from walking. And we thought of things like walking with a cane or a walker, but we didn't consider hearing disabilities. And that ended up being the most cited disability and reason for not walking in the village. The second was bladder issues. So public bathrooms are a big necessity for older walkers in our town. And there isn't a perception of these being available, particularly during the pandemic. So we learned a lot in this toolkit process in conducting the walk audits and the refining, revisiting and improving step was a chance to really reflect on what went well and what we would improve on in the future. We learned you can never start early enough and we adapted and revised as we went along, especially seeing the difficulties some had, um, their dexterity issues and writing up the audit form while walking. Um, that's why we went to cardstock and larger fonts. Another key learning was to ensure you have feedback mechanisms in place from the beginning. So collect email addresses for updates um, and we created a Gmail account for just correspondence related to the walk audit. Uh, also included in the certification application we did was the equitable process employed for what's now 2.4, provide resources and supports for local businesses, host one or more business roundtables. So this was creating an economic plan for townspeople by townspeople. I'm not going to spend much time on this one because the process was somewhat similar, although different, you know, it had a different audience, which was residents and business owners. And our narratives for both this and the walk audit are available through sustainablect.org. Here the town's economic development commission created an economic development planning process, which was inclusive of residents of old Lyme, town commissions, organizations, and agencies that interact with businesses and the business community itself. As part of the economic planning process, these stakeholders were all invited to participate in roundtable workshops to identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to old lines economic landscape. And leading up to the workshop, the workshops, the EDC and the special committees related to it had multiple forums and open houses to inform everyone of the process underway. An online survey was given to residents and business owners to understand concerns and interests of the larger population. One thing learned in this survey was that Old Lyme has about double the typical percentage of home businesses, um, more so than other municipalities, and that was pre-pandemic. Um, and the survey in the open house helped us to understand the task we wanted to accomplish through the round tables, which was to create an economic plan that reflected who the town was and would like to be and what legacy it would like to leave. So the round tables, help determine overarching themes and goals to prioritize further collaborative economic development efforts. And the process allowed a variety of voices to be heard. And it's where we first learned from business owners how the shrinking older population along with younger people having no incentive to stay in town was affecting small business owners in terms of both customers and potential workforce. And several work streams have come out of that process, a new focus on economic development in um, the arts, home-based businesses, and outdoor recreation. So the last one, uh, the last equity process I wanna share with you is um, in the works. 
and this is for 4.4, provide an arts and culture program for youth. Old Lyme has a regional school district with the town of Lyme. And we share with Lyme our Youth Service Bureau and our Senior Center. So we're collaborating for this action and we're applying the equity toolkit to the action, meaning we're being very intentional in bringing young people to the table to create the arts programming. When I mentioned in the beginning, the phone conversation I had where I said organizers need to sit on their hands and let kids create this, we need the kids to come up with what they want offered and how they want it offered, if that's mentors or small groups, formal programming. So our biggest challenge right now is reaching the youth in an inclusive way. We can easily identify young artists and what I would call joiners, but we want to reach the the kids who um, might not typically participate because of any number of reasons, um, maybe lack of resources, or they spend the summer watching younger siblings, or even because of lack of confidence, um, any reason at all. So based on the idea of a sustainable Connecticut equity coach, Christina, we're creating a survey monkey for all middle school and high school kids, and we hope to identify the barriers to participating in the planning or the programming. So we're challenged to get the survey distributed and taken. Um, as apparently there's a lot of surveys asked of students, so this is the current challenge, but I'm excited to see what the group co-creates and it's sure to be relevant and equitable and exciting all at the same time. So thank you for letting me share all that with you. And our email is sustainableoldlime at gmail.com. And I will stop my screen share. Excellent. Cheryl, thank you so much. So we'll have time for discussion as we move on. But yeah, you're getting a lot of claps out there. <laughs> um, let's, if anyone has some questions right now, before we move to the equity coaching support, um, we'll take a couple and then we can continue later on. If you've, uh, yeah, just, um, raise your hand physically or with the little thing or just unmute any burning questions for cheryl uh, Lynn, is it okay if i ask a question real quick of course yeah so cheryl first off thank you so much for for all of that that's incredible to hear um i was just curious if uh your group worked with an equity coach uh and if so what was that process like for um for your team so for the first two ones i talked about the walk audit Am I? Okay, I made sure I wasn't muted. Um, for the walk audit and for the business roundtable, we did not walk work with an equity coach. Um, we are kind of seat of our pants, to be honest with you. Um, but in collaborating with Lime on this last one, the arts programming, they brought in an equity coach and I sat in on that um, conversation and it was remarkable. I mean, just the idea of doing a survey to find the kids was a great idea. So it really, um, I can definitely see using equity coaches in the future. And, and we have some other projects we're interested in pursuing. Um, I know um, there's another person here from Old Lyme in the coffee hour this morning. And I know she's quite interested in the equity topic overall. And so I'm sure we're gonna be utilizing coaches Excellent. Any other questions at the moment? Okay, let's move on to Ahmad and we can have a conversation uh, during and after that as well. All yours. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, hi everyone again. Uh, good morning. Uh, so the reason I asked that, that final question uh, is because everything that we talk about in terms of equity coaching, we really want to make sure that Yes, we have our area of expertise, but we also want to honor that y'all are the experts, right? These are your towns. You're the ones doing this work. You're living it day in and day out. Uh, and it's really important, at least for me personally, to really communicate that, right? Of That we're there to support you all versus we're there to come in and take over, right? Of I live somewhere completely different and I'm like, all right, move aside. I got this. I will do everything for you kind of thing. And that's not, and that's really, 
not what equity coaching is about at all. Um, so before uh, I, before I spend a few minutes in terms of like the process itself and what does it actually look like when uh, you know when you reach out to Jess and you request an equity coach, um, although I'm sure some of you have already worked with equity coaches and hopefully those were good experiences. Um, but before all that, I kind of wanted to take a little bit of a step back and I wanted to kind of talk about something that I see fairly often um, in this work, whether through equity coaching or just equity work in general. Um, and that's a little bit of uh, kind of a conversation around equity shame. Um, and this is, a, this is a thing that kind of exists uh, within municipalities, it exists within nonprofits, it, it exists within movements, it kind of exists everywhere. Um, right, where there's kind of this idea of, because equity is seen as something that is valuable, something that is good, we can't be good people if we're not doing everything equity, right? And that goes into like a lot of philosophical things, right? In terms of like, who is a good person? Who is a bad person? But I kind of want us to kind of take a step back when it comes to equity coaching and just this program in general of it's not about being good or bad, right? It's not about you're already doing X equals, all right, because you have silver status, that means you're a good person, right? Or you have bronze, so maybe you're like decent, right? But you're not good quite yet, right? Or you don't have either of those and you've never done equity work specifically in this context, and that makes you a bad person. It's not about that whatsoever, right? When it comes to equity, all of us have work to do. There's just always additional things that we can be doing, right? So it's not a matter of if we do more that makes us slightly better people than we were the day before. It's just a part of everything that we are, everything that we do. And that's ultimately the message and the forms of support that we really want to be supporting you all with um, as equity coaches, right? Of we are there to walk alongside you as you formulate what actions you want to take, or if you already have actions in mind to support you in terms of how do we support you so that you elevate the work that you're already doing, right? The work that you're interested in. And then also at the same time, how do we support you to take a step back from the work that you're kind of stuck in, right? Uh, and I hear that all the time of it's very last minute. We need something to be done like this week, right? As you're kind of trying to submit everything all at the same time, and it's really an opportunity to kind of take a step back of, all right, you're an expert in your town. How do we support you as equity coaches with the connections that we have, right? With the uh, supporting you in terms of like having spaces like this, right? Where you're connecting with additional individuals from across the state. A lot of the equity coaches also have experience nationally. Some of us have experience internationally, right? And so like, we're able to take that step back to give you a little bit of a breather, right? Of, all right, You've been in the midst of this for so long, right? How do we take that step back? How do we see the things that you may have been missing over time? And how do we support you so that you elevate all of that work, right? And so for me, that's really critical in terms of really moving away from, from that shame, that good, the bad, right? Who's the best and, and all of that, we're beyond that, right? That doesn't necessarily help. That actually just prevents the conversation from moving forward, right? Because the fact that all of you are here means you care about equity, right? And for me to work with any of you, right? Or just see everything that you all are, it's not a matter of like, all right, well, prove to me how much equity have you done? How much experience do you have with this? What actions have you taken, right? What other trainings have you? It's not about any of that, right? And, and for me, one of my favorite things with the sustainable C CT program within the equity platforms in particular, right, is that it's not about all of those things. It's literally just to take a step back, to breathe, and to just honor one another as individuals, because that's really what we do, right? And so definitely keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to quickly go over before going through the process um, is just that openness to, to grow and learn, uh, right? Like I said, we all have work to do, right? Even as equity coaches, we still have work to do, right? There are things I don't have answers for. There are things that I still work on as a daily practice. There are things that I haven't started working on as a daily practice when it comes to equity, right? And getting into conversations with municipalities and individuals that are recognizing that, right? Where we can just see each other as humans, right? Of maybe sure, I have a little bit more experience with equity, but you know your town better than anybody else. And we can just see that. And we're able to just move away from that expectation of that, all right, well, we're already doing it, we're this, we're that. And it's, it's not about any of those, 
right? So sitting back, just allowing both of us to grow, right? I grow working with municipalities, right? Because you're able to bring things to the table that I don't necessarily have, right? So the way that Old Lime um, did some of the work that they did is just incredible, right? I don't live in Old Lime, right? And so they're able to bring the solutions to the table that I won't be able to, to, to come up with, right? And again, our job is really to support you so that you're able to do all of that so that we can grow together and get to where we need to go. So with that said, I do wanna talk a little bit about the process. Um, and for those of you that have worked with an equity coach um, before, I know uh, a couple of you have worked with me, um, it's different every single time, right? In terms of depending on the equity coach that you work with, it's going to be a completely different experience. And more than that, depending on how you enter this work, it's also going to be a completely different experience, right? So sometimes people will out already an action in place, right? And they're like, here's my action. Let's have a conversation specifically about this. There has been times, right, where people will come forward and just be like, hey, this just happened in the world, right? We haven't started having conversations. We don't know where to go with this. I don't know anything about this. Can we have conversations, right? And it, there's a million different ways that we could kind of enter those different conversations. Um, but it's really up to you to kind of determine what is your starting point? What makes sense for you and your town? Um, usually when I work with, with towns, I always love having an initial conversation with the person who is reaching out, the person who is seeing the need for an equity coach or just additional equity support um, in the town, right? Just getting to know where they stand, right? What are the motivators that, that that person's bringing to the table? What are the challenges that exist within the town, right? We, we all know that towns are complex, right? Any kind of system is going to be complex and you're going to have people that are 100% on board with equity and you're going to have some people that are completely 100% against it and you're going to have 90% of people that don't actually know anything about equity, right, but have created opinions based on the perception of it. All of that is fine, right? And so I usually like having that initial conversation, right, of what is your vision? Where do you want to go? Before we really jump into a conversation with additional town staff, right, with the decision makers, because sometimes it's not necessarily the decision maker that's coming forward and saying, hey, this is important. Um, and then we really go from there, right? And it could be one conversation, it could be multiple conversations. Personally, I do wish that more towns would take up the full four hours, right? That you have, you have at least four hours, right? With equity coaches. I do wish that more towns would take up the full four hours, right? We know you don't have a lot of time. We know that you have a lot of different things going on. Um, but really keep in mind with equity coaching, it's not a matter of, all right, if I have a one hour conversation equals one action, right? Equals I need a deliverable. You could have conversations with us for four hours and you might not come up with an action by the end of those four hours, right? But the benefits that you get from those conversations, from that space can be completely different, right? Ideally, you're always benefiting. Um, I haven't heard from folks that are like, this was a complete waste of time. <laughs> Although that could be a possible thing, I hope not. Um, but really keep that in mind uh, that you do have those hours uh, and, and we are there to, to support in the ways that make sense for all of you. Um, and I don't remember if Lynn, you mentioned this, um, but equity coaching is not dependent on just action, right? And so if something happens in your town that's not even related to the world of sustainability, right? But it's related to equity, approach us. Right. If it's not about the, the, the actions and the tasks that you have at all, but it's something that you want to do for your town because you see a need, wonderful, let's support you with some of that. And also at the same time, when it comes to the sustainability pieces, which is why we're all here, right? Of even if you feel like you already have everything kind of in order of that, you have things figured out, request an equity to, to work with an equity coach anyways, right? To just check in of like, hey, here's everything that we're doing, right? And it's not necessarily of how do we improve these actions, but for the future, for future years, how do we build additional frameworks and foundations to continuously elevate this work, right? Because this work isn't about today, right? It's not about just this one year, right? A lot of us here, and I can't speak for everyone, right? But a lot of the people I work with in terms of equity and sustainability, right? A lot of us aren't here because we think we're going to fix everything by like this summer 
or even within like five years, right? We're here because we're in it for the long run. And so just like you would think for sustainability, right, of what is something that you can do today to really build towards something 20 years from now, you get to do the exact same thing with equity. And we have the honor to support you through that process if you choose to, to, to or if you want to work, to work with us, I guess. Um, so I'll stop there. Um, love to take questions uh, and just hear thoughts from individuals and um, yeah, I'll stop there. Excellent, thank you. So people, yeah, feel free to raise your hand or just unmute with any observations, questions, things you wanna share. And while we're waiting for the first person to do that, I just wanna remind you or maybe let you know if you're not aware, another change we made for 2021 based on input from towns and the equity coaches was doing the equity action in one year really feels kind of like you have to just rush and we're not, we're not doing the long haul. We're kind of not even enabling the process part, which is the most important. So we have changed that. You have three years. You, so anything, any um, uh, equity initiative or uh, action you've started within the past three years, um, you can submit per credit. And, and we're hoping that that's going to, you know, kind of ease the anxiety around the points and really just work on the process and what can we do today to move us forward um, for the long term. So who's got a question? Oh, come on, you guys asked for this. Oh, Pippa, hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm, uh, I'm well. Uh, Pippa from Westport and I really apologize for um, arriving late. I had another I didn't realize I couldn't have both going at the same time because <laughs> I would have put the other one on silent. Um, Westport is reading the book by um, Leila Saad, Me and White Supremacy. The, um, and uh, spending, the, and the library is coordinating, and it's like a town read. And then we're addressing anti racism in many different um, formats. So I'm just saying, uh, we'll be in touch with you because I think we're probably doing what needs to be done. I haven't looked at the action specifically, and I know you have specific asks, but um, I, I think we should connect. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, Margaret, please. Oh, okay, got it. Um, so uh, in the field, we're working with drafting an equity statement. And do you, do you folks have any advice or anybody out there who's been involved in this? Um, we seem to be stuck between um, who actually, so we have a team of three and we're, we're sort of spearheading getting this going but we're not the drafting team. The drafting team comes from the um, groups, right? So we're trying to figure out the best way to form this drafting team. We had some concerns about making, oh, hi, we're asking you to be on this team because you represent this group. But we thought that could be a sensitive piece. So we're trying to figure out how to um, invite or ask for how to create this drafting team. How do we contact them? So that, that's kind of where we're at. Any quick responses for us? Yeah, I, I guess I, I can respond really quickly. Um, first off, that's that's absolutely wonderful. And, and that is something that, that we can kind of support with. Um, the way I kind of look at equity when, when it comes to really any action, right, is equity is really the process, um, right? So really having the conversations of, um, what exactly would you be looking for from the drafting team, um, right? What kind of ask would be too much, right? Versus too little, and it's not actually gonna be helpful. What are things that you can do without having labor go to like the more marginalized people within the community? Um, and it's really like all of those different conversations that we're able to kind of begin having um, because going to an individual, so like, for example, if someone comes to me, right? Out of the blue and says, hey, can you join this, right? Because you're, uh, you know, you're, you're queer and you're, uh, you're a BIPOC person and you're this and you're that, I probably will not do it, right? Um, because that, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be like a completely formulated, hey, like, here's the acknowledgements of the reality of 
what already happens, right? What already exists. Here's why this is so beneficial. Um, really speaking to the needs of the communities or the groups of individuals that you're trying to bring to the table within that drafting team. Um, and, and there's beautiful ways to do that within different towns. And um, you're able to do it in ways that, that offer healing and, uh, and support for community members. Uh, and so it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to really uh, not even just look at this as just building a statement, right, or one single committee, um, but more in terms of how do you utilize this action, right, and the process behind the action in terms of equity as a way to support the transformation of your community, um, which again is something that equity coaches would be able to, to support you with and, um, and walk alongside you, uh, right, as you kind of formulate that, um, as you do that work. Thanks. Has anyone else been uh, working on equity statements or involved in any of that? Yeah. Or any questions? Hey, we've, we've been kind of trying to decide. Um, we looked at Glastonbury and New Britain, who are the two that you all had posted under the resources on the website and read their statements and um, trying to decide and whose decision is it to make anyway, how broad the equity statement should be? Should it target a certain group? Um, you mentioned earlier, oh, you could have an equity statement about health care or um, racism or is, um, so how, you know, in a sense, how broad or how narrow, when does that decision come up? And we feel that maybe it comes up within the process um, with the, the drafting folks. I, I just trying to find the starting spot. It's kind of ambiguous. <laughs> um, hello, this is Mary Jo Nozel from Old Lime. Um, um, thank you, Cheryl. You did a great job, by the way. Proud of you. Um, Margaret, I can just tell you where we have started. And basically, we've uh, used the template, if you will, that's been used pretty much nationally. Um, and uh, Health Equity Solutions out of New Haven has also supported this version. We've sent our version out to various interested people in the community and I've gotten some different suggested verbiage to negotiate amongst the um, key stakeholders at their Board of Selectmen. And the idea is to keep it general highlight what's good about old line in the process because each town has their own um, concerns obviously and um, the data piece is what's key to me and of the different versions that we have looked at um, that's the piece i've fought for the most because that's what's going to drive the initiatives going forward what your town does well to make sure that you provide an equitable environment for all people and um, versus just a feel good statement. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to work with our sustainable old line team and an equity coach um, in, in moving this statement along. We're trying to do it respectfully um, take our time so that uh, people can educate themselves by reading uh, applicable information and, and literature um, to, to get a broad-based support for the initiative. So I hope that helps. Thank you, definitely, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, that gives me a sense of the, the process that I hear you talking about, Mary Jo, is a, a sort of a back and forth with the draft, as opposed to hear the people, we're meeting, we're drafting, that's our statement, now goes to the selectmen for approval. So that's super helpful, thanks. Welcome. So I have a um, question. Hi, Brenda Flusi from Talent. I'm on my Talent Town Council. 
we have had residents bring up the um, HES um, equity um, statements to our town council. And we're in, I'm on the sustainable CT obviously group. We're getting a lot of resistance from every other member of our uh, town council to even move forward. Um, it's a little, it's heartbreaking. Um, and we're getting resistance from, um, you know, other members in elected officials and uh, stakeholders. Um, at what point do we bring in somebody? I, I think we're already there, but what, at what point do we bring in somebody to help mediate or help us walk through? Because, um, you know, the elected officials that we have are probably 95% or more uh, 80% or more of um, white cisgender population. Um, and when we're taking a look at some equity statements, not a lot of our community is represented um, or certain segments of our community are finding they're not represented. So, you know, is this something that we, you know, it, I'm passionate about it. I wanna um, move forward on this, but, you know, do we need to start bringing in someone from um, out of town who, who's not, as invested in the town to help us, you know, someone like a mediator. Um, what are your suggestions? Yeah. Um, so having an outsider come in to the town for mediation and things like that, um, and sometimes it's not necessarily mediation, right, but um, potentially just even like facilitated conversations, right, um, to build towards that mediation or creating some sort of process um, for that long term transformation. Um, is definitely helpful uh, because that person has that outsider privilege, right? So they don't have the same consequences and it's not the same trauma. Um, so if like everyone in the town is like, we basically hate X group of people, um, that person's able to kind of just move away from it, right? Um, I, I would say that um, I love your line of thinking. I love your investment in all of this. I understand how heartbreaking all of that is. Um, I would honestly recommend reaching out to work with an equity coach to, to think through some of that process, right? Even if it's just you working with an equity coach to just talk it through, right? Of um, like, what, what would be a good starting point for that, right? Because if you just bring in a mediator into the town council, you know, like next week, um, you might end up with even more resistance, right? Um, and at the same time, what I would say is also, um, it, and this is where an equity coach can kind of support with some of these conversations is also um, really making sure that the the individuals, right, that 20%, right, that doesn't fit the uh, cis straight white individuals, um, right, really capturing their desires, right? What do they want? <clears throat> there, there will be times, and in some of your towns where the, more, the most marginalized individuals in those spaces, um, they actually don't necessarily want a statement. Um, Sometimes a statement can do more harm for certain populations than good. Um, and so really capturing that, right? Of, and really making it clear along the way of, we wanna capture your voices, right? As the marginalized individuals in this town, right? Recognizing that the town is not perfect, right? We have work to do and recognizing that you're not the ones to do this work, right? We're not putting this labor on you. We're willing to, to have an outside person come in and support this and everything, but we wanna make sure that you're leading in terms of, where do we go, right? What are, what are the priorities? What, do we, what are we able to compromise in um, versus the areas that we're, we don't want to compromise in? And you may have already done all of that, which would be incredible, um, right? But, but ju that just goes for, for all the towns, right? Of really trying to capture that. And at the same time, um, again, I really appreciate your line of thinking of having an outsider come in or even potentially like an expert doing this work from the town itself that is lesser known um, works as well. Um, but really of making sure that we're not placing labor on the more marginalized people, right? Of, hey, like X is not working. And so, all right, well, let's find the black person in, in town and ask them to fix racism, um, right? Which is a lot of work. Um, but again, an equity coach is able to kind of support with a lot of those conversations. And even in terms of, um, you know, as you're working towards that, right? So potentially having a couple conversations early on, right? Potentially even supporting in terms of um, thoughts about the type of mediator that you might want, right? Um, thinking of uh, moving beyond that realm of possibilities 
uh, that, uh, that already exists, right, in terms of things that we've already seen in other towns and things like that. Um, and so we're able to kind of walk with you along that process. Um, but really appreciate you sharing that and really appreciate your commitment to all of that work. Thank you. Thanks. I'll be contacting you guys. Excellent. Thank you. So it's 11 o'clock or a minute after. I want to respect all your time. We will stay here if you want to continue the conversation for a while. Ahmed, if you need to jump, of course, uh, we respect that. I want Jess to just do a very quick commercial for next month's um, uh, coffee hour so you know what's coming. Okay, so in 30 seconds or less, mm -hmm. next month, the 19th of March, the same time, we'll be featuring a couple of our sustainable CT partners, at least the Connecticut Green Bank, the Connecticut Coalition and Homelessness and CT Rides to talk a little bit about some of the resources that they have available for towns and you can pick their brains if there's something that you would love for them to be offering you or you wanna work with them in some way. We wanted to just give them um, the floor so they can connect with you and you can connect with them. If there are any other partners that you'd like us to invite, we're open to it. You can shoot me a note or put it in the chat right now or just say it and we'll work to reach out to those individuals. But that's coming up for next month and we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Jess. So, uh, Ahmed, are you? Do you need to to run or? You can stay a little bit longer if there's okay. any questions. Thank, thank you. So, yeah, Edward, please. All right. So, I have a question. I'm Ed Chicarello from Rocky Hill. We just signed up for Sustainable Connecticut. So, on my first visit, woo, yay! Uh, I'm excited about it. And Welcome. Great, thank you. It's great, great to hear the conversation. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, searched around a little bit on the site, but, uh, you know, I may ask a question that, you know, maybe the answer is already evident to everybody, but, you know, there it is anyways. So, uh, you know, as I listen to the, the, the question um, and the discussion, it's a great discussion on equity, but um, I wonder if, if I'm a uh, mod, if, if you could, or anybody else with uh, on the group could define it or, or show me, um, somebody mentioned the equity solutions in New Haven, um, Litchfield is you're drafting your own statement. Is there a statement already on Connecticut CT where, is there a template somewhere that says, you know, this is a great, uh, uh, you know, the, these are the components of equity. So I'm a former elementary school teacher. So if we look at, you know, the concept, what's the kind of, what is equity and what is it not? You know, so I guess I'd throw that out at you, Ahmad, if you maybe take a few minutes on that. Yeah. Or anybody. Oh, go ahead, Lynn. Yeah, no, I'd just say, it's very open and flexible based on the community. So yes, Ahmad, uh, please <laughs> um, speak to that. We do not have a specific definition. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, um, I guess before uh, going into the definition of in terms of resources. So part of the training that uh, Sustainable CT offers, right? You have those four different um, uh, times that the training happens. Um, part of that conversation does go into more of the, the ins and outs, right, of um, different forms of equity and justice and, uh, and everything else. So definitely highly, highly, highly recommend that training um, for anyone who hasn't gone through it. Or if you already have gone through it, why not go through it again? Um, we always have things, additional things to learn. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of equity, in terms of like the the just the basics of it, right? It's it's really just making sure that everyone within the community has everything that they need to get to where they need to go, um, right? So it's kind of looking at within your town, within your community, whatever it is, right? What kinds of access already exists for different groups of people? Um, what additional layers of access do other groups of people need? Um, and even if uh, oftentimes I'll work with towns, right, where it's like, well, everyone has access to everything. And it's like, but does everyone have access to the, to the amount that they need, right? We all have very different needs. And so, um, Ed, you coming from like that schooling background, right? And uh, you're probably familiar with like with, with school children, right, of how different, in, different kids will need different types of attention, right, different types of investment for them to succeed to get to where they need to go. Um, and so it's the same way for equity. So it's just making sure that everyone has the things that they need to, uh, to get to where they need to, uh, to get to where they need to go. 
Um, so that's kind of my basic definition of it. Uh, but like Lynn said, it is very flexible um, and very malleable and um, it, it can change over time in terms of how you define it, whether it's um, uh, more broad versus uh, very specifically uh, defined for your community. Um, because there will be different types of inequity, right, and um, different types of things that prevent individuals from accessing that level of um, support and everything that they need to get to where they need to go. I think that's a great definition. Everyone has what they need to get to uh, to get to where they want to go. I mean, it's a you got to start somewhere, and <clears throat> when <clears throat> excuse me. When I just did a quick Google search on equity, it comes up with you know business and, and money, economics. It doesn't talk about what you're talking about, or what we are talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely one of um, I guess even in terms of research, there's definitely an enormous gap. Um, and so I'm currently doing my master's degree in conflict transformation, um, and so I'll often write about equity and even like ethics and things like that. And it's amazing of the vast majority of equity research, right? Like 99% of it is just finance related. Um, you'll have more research in terms of equality, um, which really speaks to uh, kind of how over the last few dozen decades, uh, decades, yeah, decades, I guess, right? Where there was this idea of promoting equality, right? Of everyone has access to the exact same amount of things. Um, which we know doesn't necessarily work because different people need different things. Mm -hmm. um, right? But in terms of research, in terms of resources um, on a, I guess, more like academic uh, level and research scapes and things like that, um, there's definitely gaps. Um, I will say though, that um, even just seeing uh, the names of some of your towns, um, there, there are incredible organizations in the state who are doing incredible equity work, um, right, that have been defining it for decades and um, have been uh, really creating like different toolkits and different resources um, for the ins and outs. Uh, and so definitely, uh, I always recommend utilizing what already exists within the state. Um, there's already a wealth of knowledge. Um, and then last thing I just want to mention before I let anyone else ask questions um, is that in terms of uh, working with an equity coach, um, you are absolutely more than welcome to, to reach out and have some of that initial conversation of, hey, like, let's define this, right? And I actually prefer when communities do that because um, we each have very different definitions and it's so rare for us to take that step back and just say, how do we define it for our community? And that by itself is a part of the process, right? And it's so critical. Um, there, there is no, I guess, too beginner stage to start, right? Um, we're all in this together. We're all learning through this. And honestly, again, sometimes um, I believe it's even better to start from places that we even think that we already know, um, because then we're even able to unlearn things throughout the process. Um, as we're working towards where we need to go. So definitely feel free to reach out um, and have those conversations. Excellent. Yeah, if there's one last quick question, we'll entertain that and then we will just continue these conversations in various formats. I don't have a question, Lynn, but I do want to uh, hype for Ahmed, who was our equity coach, because. He really helped us out a lot. And I, I find it very interesting that you said, please use your four hours. I, I'm gonna just tell you, and I don't know how to, how to say this, but we spent a lot of time with you. I don't think we spent the full full hours, but I think we spent a couple hours at least um, with you. And, and it was more than one occasion. And um, I will say in the back of my mind, I kept thinking to myself, okay, you've got to save sometime a half hour or 45 just in case you need to talk to him again so you don't go over your four and i know that sustainable ct is much more uh, forgiving than that but i just want to say that i i think that's good advice use use all the time you need and and you were a great help to us we are moving through the equity actions that we set up now and we actually just did a leadership training for our elected officials and all of the department heads in town a three-hour um, diversity and equity training with a 
um, an actual trainer who did it through Zoom. It was excellent and it got a lot of very positive feedback. So we're sort of just trying to forge ahead and keep going. And we're hoping by doing that through leadership that it will filter down. And we're hoping to offer some of those kind of trainings for you know, the rest of the town, um, people who work for the town and anybody else who is just a resident who'd like to join us. So thank you, Amar. It's amazing. Thank you for sharing all of that. And such a beautiful way to end. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Ahmad. Thank you, everyone, for your questions and sharing and your um, earnest interest in this journey that we are all on personally and within our communities and our state and how taking it seriously. And just going back to uh, Ahmad's starting point that this isn't, even though it's like a certification program, it's not about the points. It's not about, are you doing this? There's no right. It's, it's just a journey for all of us. And um, we're grateful to um, be able to provide the support and have such a great folks working with us on it. So thank you. We'll see you around on Zoom and reach out on any questions to info at sustainablect.org or any of us directly. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Hi, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>